Mr. Malley, thank you for being here today and for your efforts with Iran. In December of 2021, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said of Iran, and I quote, that if diplomacy fails, we're prepared to turn to other options. Now, I recognize that that statement was made before the war in Ukraine and that significant international attention has been diverted. But can you speak to what other options are on the table? Senator, thank you. Um, of course, there's only so much I could say in this setting, but I want to make this uh, as clear as I could, and, and I think it will respond to some of the other questions we've had. President Biden is unequivocal. Iran will not be allowed to obtain a nuclear weapon. That's been a longstanding bipartisan position by prior administrations, and we are confident that future presidents will make the same. We believe that diplomacy is the best way to achieve this goal, and by the way, so do our Israeli allies. So does the Defense Minister of Israel, who just reiterated that when we met with him only a week or two ago. That said, we will do whatever is necessary to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon, taking no option off the table. Again, those options we could discuss in a classified setting. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, I hope we'll have the opportunity to discuss those issues in a classified setting. Can you speak to Hezbollah's fortunes in Lebanon? They didn't do as well in the elections as um, were expected. Um, the leadership in Iraq continues to hold on and make progress in Iraq. Um, how, how are those ac actions and events in other parts of the Middle East affecting the ability to negotiate any kind of an agreement with Iran? Thank you, Senator. Again, an important question, which, 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 which goes to the, the comprehensive approach we need to have towards Iran, because fighting Iran's destabilizing activities does require sanctions. It does require an international coalition to press Iran in international fora. It requires working hand in hand with Israel, with our Gulf partners, with the Europeans, to counter their ballistic missile program, to counter their UAV program, to respond to their attacks. It also entails diplomacy and strengthening the central government in Iraq and weakening Hezbollah and weakening Iran's ability to take advantage of the chaos in the region, which is why the truce that has been achieved in Yemen is so important. So even as we go after Hezbollah, even after we, we go after uh, the transfer of, of weapons to, to the Houthis, sustaining and consolidating that truce is a very powerful message to send to Iran that de-escalation, ending conflict, ending the chaos from which it profits is in our interest and in the interest of our allies in the region. And do we see anything happening in Syria that may have an impact on Iran? Do we have, are we discussing what's happening in Syria with any of our allies? Senator, my, my job is, uh, is to deal with Iran. I'm sure there are other of my colleagues I'd rather not uh, uh, step into something where I may, I may uh, err, so uh, I'm, I'm sure my colleagues at the State Department would be, would be happy to, to, to address that. Okay. Um, this, I also recognize, is not part of your um, portfolio, but I was pleased to see the announcement in March regarding the release of two um, British-Iranian hostages. Uh, to the United Kingdom, but as was mentioned earlier by the chairman, we also still have a number of U.S. and European hostages who are being detained. And are is the plight of those hostages being considered at all as part of our negotiations with Iran? Thank you for raising that. Uh, uh, I think there's no issue that is that is keeping us awake more than this one, the unjust, four unjustly detained citizens. I think Chairman Menendez mentioned their names, Siamak, Bakr, Imad, and Murad. Some of them are, I know, your constituents, and I've spoken to a number of, of members of this committee about them. We have negotiated, and first of all, I just have to say, it is the most outrageous thing that Iran would use innocents, innocent citizens, and dual nationals, American citizens, others, just recently a pair of, 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 of French citizens as pawns to advance other interests. It is inexcusable, and we need to, again, find an international effort, which Secretary Blinken is, 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 is coordinating, to try to, to make sure that those who do this are held to account and that it not be repeated. But to answer your question, 
in parallel and separate from the negotiations to return to the JCPOA, we've been involved in indirect negotiations with Iran to secure the release of our four citizens. It is not easy. As you could imagine, Iran is, is making requests that are very difficult to meet and sometimes are impossible to meet. But we are continuing and we will not stop until all four of them are home and reunited with their loved ones. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Senator Young. Thank you, Chairman. Welcome, Mr. Malley, to the committee. <sighs> Read your opening statement. Iran was complying with its commitments under the JCPOA. Under the JCPOA, and I'm quoting from your testimony, Iran operated a tightly constrained and carefully monitored